hello guys welcome back to another exciting video so in today's video we're going to continue with our series on building a uh, rag graph application using Langchain and uh, neo4j right so in this video in the other videos we covered the basics of uh, building basically data ingestion using in neo4j but then we went over building a data ingestion uh, and basically an etl pipeline that automates the whole process of data uh, ingestion from our csv file into a knowledge graph in uh, neo4j right so uh, this is basically what you have done so far the first video was this manual process the second video we build an etl pipeline using docker docker compose and then neo4j and all that's so a whole pipeline to insert data from the csv file into our knowledge graph so in this video which is video number three we are going to go ahead and learn the basics of langchain so what is really langchain so langchain is an llm orchestration framework that is used to uh, basically build application that can interact with llm so it's just a framework or a library in python that helps you to interact with uh, large language models so it's not only supported in python it's supported in other languages such as javascript as well so in this video we're going to focus on langchain and how to use langchain and the very fundamental basics of langchain so this video is good for anyone who has completely no idea of what's no idea of what is langchain or anyone who is just an intermediate level or just an entry level guy in in terms of working with langchain or basically even anyone who is just an expert because we're going to go in much details when it comes to this video on basically covering the whole understanding of what langchain is so in this video we're going to go ahead and learn how to install langchain and its independent dependencies setting up your getting your open api key and then how to use your open api key uh, using a uh, chat model different chat models chat models that langchain supports handling messages dealing with templates which is a bit of uh, prompt uh, prompt engineering okay so if you're not prompt engineering is uh, don't worry about that and we also go ahead and learn basically a bit of a bit of uh, langchain expression language which is just something that's, that is very has become very commonly used in langchain whenever we're working with langchain so we're going to cover the langchain expression language and we'll use this at the end of the video when when you go into other stages so whenever we're building our rag uh, rag application rag graph application itself we'll be using langchain uh langchain expression language we we'll want to work with langchain agents so in this uh, in the current stage of ai we're moving towards an agentic kind of approach of doing things with ai so basically building ai agents that can do different stuff right so look at what AI agents are and how to build them using Langchain. We'll go ahead and create our own custom tools that these agents can use. And I'll show you how to create your own custom tools that this agent can use and also learn how to call these tools and use these tools uh, along with our AI agents. So this is basically what we'll be covering in this video. And this is just an overview of the, of the same things that we just talked about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip them, okay? So the first we're going to go ahead and do is installing Langchain and its dependencies and everything that we need to work with, okay? so uh for this we're going to go ahead and simply use um you're going to go ahead and install a couple of things so the first thing we need, we need to go ahead and do is actually create a folder a file that you're going to use so I'm, i've currently opened up my folder as we had from the previous previous video so i'm going to go ahead and create a new file i'm going to call it chat basically and wait, let me just call it let me actually have the name right here so you can just get the name so i'm going to go ahead and simply call it chatbot.pynp which is a notebook right so i'm just going to go ahead and just say rename this so chatbot dot uh interactive python notebook and then press enter so that's basically it so in here you're going to go ahead and install the dependence the dependence that you're going to use basically installation okay so you're going to go ahead and install everything that you're going to be using in here so to install all this i have the code for it so i'm going to use a command to install all this let me just go back and you're going to use this command right here to install all this okay so make sure that you copy this command and paste it in your terminal to install all this uh, library so let me just go ahead copy this command paste in my v in my vs code notebook so i'm going to go ahead and simply paste the command in here make sure you go ahead and select the right environment which is this environment you have been using so far so make sure that you go ahead and select that environment and then from there you go ahead and simply copy this command and simply paste it in here okay so let me just copy it and then paste it in here and i'll be back recording so once i have that command copied i'm just going to go ahead and simply paste it in here and this is the command right here so you can just pause the video and type it out and or you can just get it uh, from in here you can also pause the video and just look at it from in here i just simply copied it and have it added instead of my notebook right here so it is a python cell okay so this is a command right here and then say pip python 3 and then you're installing all these libraries with these specific versions okay so let's make sure you install these specific versions so that in case in the future something changes you can still follow along with the video okay so i'm just going to go ahead and simply run that uh, press shift and enter to run that cell and it's going to go ahead and install all those packages uh, on your on your basically your virtual environment so once this is installing you can go ahead and actually do other things other things okay so you can go for a coffee break or do something but for now 
we'll just go ahead and actually learn how to get your open api key, api key so go to online and then search for open api api key click on probably the very first link that you see okay so i just want you to gain the ability to actually find this on your own so just go online because these links can change and these things uh these resources can like how you get these api keys can change i don't want to demo to it to you because in maybe the two months from now it can become invalid right so just go online search for openapi.com open open ai api keys and then create your account and then get your api uh your api key so i've done i've done this demo in my other videos but in this video i don't want to do it because after some times they change the layer of the website and people start getting confused and all that right so i don't want to show you i want you to go out there and get it yourself do a bit of research is quite very very simple so just go in google and type exactly what you want and what you want in this case is open a, open ai api key okay so that should get your op should get your open api uh, open ai api key so once you have that uh, open api api key you need to go ahead and update your virtual environment so basically sorry not your virtual environment your dot env environment so basically uh this file right here so you need to open up this file i can't open it right now because it has my secrets so open up this file right now and then simply add this content so just say open open ai underscore api underscore key equals to quotes and then you paste in your open api key that you get from the website okay so that's all you need to do once you have that done that's all you need to do to load in your open open api key awesome so once you have done that then you are ready to go on so let's okay the installations are also done so that's awesome so we can now move on so i'm just going to go ahead and simply uh clear the clear the source output okay okay so now once we have that done let's see what's next on the list so we're going to talk about chat models so what are chat models so chat model is a language model basically that uses chat messages as input and returns chat messages as output so basically if you go to on chat you are typing in something right and it goes to the chat basically you're typing in some text right and this text goes to the uh to open a, open a apis right so they're not simply passing in those things as basically plain text they're doing some process processing on that text right so uh to quit to keep it in a very nice format to uh, help the lm know what has been discussed previously keeping history or, or stuff like that so chat models can help us to do that so just this, this, these are just llms that are modified to to take chat chat messages as input and return and return chat messages as output as well so these are called chat models and with open and with Langchain, we have a lot of chat models that it provides us right of the right of the box. So we can use a variety of chat models like the open API chat models and uh Llama, Llama index, uh, sorry, Llama G Mini and other open uh cloud or cloud uh and from Anthropic and all those. So we have a lot of chat models that uh Langchain provides us. So you can just go ahead and read about more of it if you are interested in. But in this case, we are going to cover only the la, the chat model that open api works with okay so let's get into it so i'm just going to go ahead and simply let's load in our environment variable so i'm going to go ahead and simply say uh this is going to be load in environment environment uh, variables so we're going to load in our environment variables right here so i think uh, what we need to load in our environment variable is the following so we're going to go ahead and simply say from uh, dot env I'm going to go ahead and import load env and i'm also going to go ahead and import uh os the os module from python so once we have it i'm going to run this all okay and then down here i'm going to go ahead and do the function so i'm going to go ahead and simply say the percentage sign and i'm going to say load uh load underscore and i'm going to use x and this one is going to say dot uh env just like that and also going to go ahead and simply run this as well so that's once we have this done i'm just going to go ahead and execute and this is going to load in all our environment variables into our basically loading the environment variables from this file into our operating systems environment variable so it can use it instead of our code without me having to expose my api key okay so once this is done uh, you can just go, go on so vertical what are chat models and chat models are the very uh, uh it's a very core component if it comes to long chain so it's very important to understand what are these chat models and how they work right so these are very core fundamental things in long chain so whenever you work langchain whenever we work with langchain langchain provides us with uh, different types of messages that we can use so i i told that uh, Lang chat models take in messages as input and return chat messages as outputs right so there are different message types that these messages could be so there could be ai messages which are basically responses from the uh, from the AI, from the llm itself there could be human message which is just basically what you type in there could be system messages basically telling the llm on how to behave 
there could be different function messages there could be different chat messages there could be also be different tool messages and we'll see this about tool messages whenever we read the section of working with tools so there are different uh there are different types of these message messages that uh chat models work with okay so now let's go ahead and learn how to interact with these chat models so i'm going back into my vs code right here and i'm going to go ahead and say from long chain from long chain dot long long chain underscore open ai i'm going to go ahead and import the following to import chat open ai just like this so that's a chat model so let me get the spelling of uh import right there so import and then run this so once we have the chat model imported i'm going to go ahead and create simply create a variable called lm is going to be equal to the chat model and you're going to go ahead and load in our environment variable right right there okay so uh, i'm going to go ahead and simply say api underscore key and it's going to be equals to os dot get env and then finally load in that environment variable make sure that you put this inside of strings and this value that we use right here is the same value that is instead of your dot env file so this right here right so this is the same thing we use right here so whatever you use instead of your env file is what you use here as well okay so once we have that you can also specify which model you want to work with so open ai comes with a lot of models right so there is a gpt 3.5 model turbo there is a gpt4 o mini there is a gpt4 it's gpt4 o itself and uh, gpt3.5 is going to be um is going to be removed uh, kind of like let me say removed it's not the right right word to use but yeah you get the idea it's going to be phased out in the upcoming uh months or days so i had the news so uh this model might be phased also in the future if you're running this code and you get an error try to switch to something like gpt 40 right and let's see if that would work i don't know if the, yeah it's called gpt 40 no i don't think it's called for o like this yeah or for o you can use for o mini one of those okay Okay, so uh, it's better to use the 4 because it's much, much cheaper. Okay, but the GPT 3.5 is probably even way cheaper than uh, these other ones. Okay, so once we have that, we can go ahead and actually ask this LLM a message. Right? You can say LLM.invoke, and you can go ahead and simply invoke it. And basically, this invoking is a way of us asking this LLM a message. So let's say hello. Uh, hello. Let me say hello there. Okay, so let me just I'll say hello there, right there. That's all I want to ask it, and let's run this, and let's see what we get back from the LLM. So basically, the LLM is responding to us, and you can see we have a chat message as we talked about. So a chat message basically is the message type that is coming from the LLM itself. So you can see you have the uh, we have hello, how can I assist you today? And the, uh, this is from the LLM. Okay, so this is from ChatGPT, sorry GPT four O Mini, okay, which is the uh, OpenAI model that you are using. So that's basically how it's easy to interact with this chat model. So you can, there are different chat models that you can work with. You can work with the one from Anthropic. You can work with uh, uh, the ones from, yeah, there's Anthropic. Uh, that's, uh, I think, the one I know. Anthropic, you work with Llama, Llama 3, or other models out there. So this in this video, I'm going to keep it to OpenAI, okay? So that's basically how you can interact with these uh, chat models. Okay, so now that you have interacted with chat models, let's see what's next on the list. So we have look at chat models. We have understood what they are and how to work with these chat models so now you're going to see how you can use uh working with different message types in uh in long chain we along with chat models so we talk about different message types such as the system message the ai message like in this case we have right here we have the human message basically what you type in so this is what i type in right here is my human is a human message that what the ai responds back with is called an ai message and a system message basically tells the system how to behave right a system prompt tell the system how to behave so now let's go ahead and work with these different types of messages. Let me just keep, uh, so let's say that working with uh, with messages. Let's say message types right there. So work with message types. So let's move on in here. And I need to go ahead and import a couple of things. I'm going to say from long chain uh, underscore call dot messages. I'm going to go ahead and import a different human message. I'm also going to import, import the system message right here. So I'm going to import these two message types, which is the human message, which is basically what I type in. The system message basically this tells the system on how to behave, right? So, so messaging a uh, message for priming AI behavior usually passed in as a as a first sequence within the input messages. So that's basically what it does. So we're going to go ahead and say messages, uh, message messages, and it's going to be a list of messages. The first one is going to be a system message. So a system a message and this then let's listen message basically tells the ai how to behave so you can tell it anything you want so you can tell it to behave like harry potter you can tell it to behave like a, a pirate you can tell it to behave like a nice ai assistant you can tell it to behave basically like anyone in the world right so let's tell it uh, let's give it a prompt and see 
so let's say you are you are an ai assistant you are an ai assistant designed to tell funny jokes of oh, something there's something of that sort. so let's say you say you're an AI assistant uh designed to tell funny jokes uh jokes this is basically so that's basically what they prompt you tend the system to behave like it's an ai that is designed to tell funny jokes so do not answer any question that is not about jokes also let's also ask that way so do not answer any question that is uh, not a joke okay so we want this uh, lm to st strictly answer only uh questions or basically deal with only jokes nothing else apart from jokes so we're going to ask a human message you can tell it uh tell me tell me a joke and let's see this is that's a message we have created a message the system message telling the lm how to behave and the human message basically this is a message from you and i want to i want the, the lm to tell me a joke that's basically it so once we have that uh, done i'm going to go in here and simply pass in get the response and this is going to be lm dot invoke and you're going to invoke and pass in those messages right there okay so once we have i'm going to go ahead and simply print out i'm going to actually print out uh the mess the response and you can do dot content why are we doing content because if you look here we're getting an ai message back and it has an attribute called content which has the message itself from the basically the uh, the lm's response so that's what you're trying to do right here so once i have it i'm gonna go ahead and run this and let's see what we get back so uh why don't scientists trust atoms because they make up everything <laughs> okay that's interesting <laughs> Yeah, so scientists don't trust atoms apparently because they make up everything. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that's a funny joke anyway. So let's move on and uh, let's look at prompt templates. Okay, so once you have look at Lang, they're basically working with different message types. Now let's go ahead and start working with prompt templates. So if you ever work with Python, uh, we have this string called string interpolations, right? Uh, string interpolations, whereby you can have a string. Let's say that I have a, let me say, uh, Let's say, let me just say something. Let's say, you, you, come with, I don't know if you've ever worked with F strings in Python. It's very similar to this F string. So you can have like, let's say, uh, text, and it's gonna be equals to hello. And then finally, you're going to go and you say username. So we can make this an F string. That's basically it. So now if I create a variable up here and then call it user, username equals to, let's say, prints. And uh, if I go ahead and print, and I print out the text variable. Let's see what we get. We get back hello prince. Even though I never typed in prince here, but because we use this variable name in here, it's going to be replaced with this. So that's called string interpolation in Python. So we have a version of this for LLM score for working with messages called uh, prompt templates that we can use. So I'm going to say prompt uh, templates. And this is where the, these are like the basics of prompt engineering, right? So you can give the LLM a bunch of instructions, but some instructions are variables and they're going to change depending on the use the use case, right? So in such case, you can hard code everything. So you leave use this string interpolations or which are called prompt templates in uh, working with messages in Langchain and you use that instead, instead of having to hard code everything. Right? So that's basically what it, how it works. So let's try to work with prompt templates ourselves, basically prompt templates ourselves. So for that, you're going to go ahead and say from langchain, uh, langchain.core.prompts, I'm going to prompts, I'm going to go ahead and import the prompt uh, template, the object itself. So once I have that, I'm going to run that cell. And once I have written that, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called prompt underscore template. And this is going to be prompt template. And this is going to be equals to the following. So I'm going to say prompt template dot from underscore template just like that you're going to use uh, this method of, of this class and you're going to go ahead and simply say uh ask that so you say uh tell tell me a joke uh tell me let's say tell me a fact about a historic a his, tell me a historic fact let's say tell me a historic uh sorry not yet a historic a historic fact not figure so historic fact about there and i'm going to go ahead and say event in and i'm going to go ahead and simply say location that's basically so i'm going to ask the lm to tell us a historic fact about a certain event within a given location so for example tell me a historic fact uh tell me actually let me get this right so tell me 
tell me about a historic fact. Okay, I'm making grammar errors here. So tell me about a historic fact. Uh, tell me about a historic. Let me just get this right. So tell me a fact. So not, let me just get this right. So tell me a fact that makes more sense. Tell me a historic fact about something that happened in X location. So tell me a historic fact about the First World War in France. So it's going to tell you about the First World War, but focusing mainly on France. Okay. So that's basically it. And once we have that done, again, that's just an example. Okay. So if you're from France, no catching feelings, right? <laughs> Okay, once you have that, I'm going to go ahead and actually format this prompt template. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And I'm just going to go ahead and simply say prompt underscore template dot format. And I'm going to use the format uh, argument and I'm going to pass in event. And you can see World War II location in Europe. So in, in real life, this is going to be replaced. I'm going to say, tell me a historic fact about the event is World War II in Europe. That's basically it. So once, once we have that done, uh, we are good to go. So I can go ahead and simply run this all and you can say, tell me it's very fat about World War One, which is the event itself in Europe, which is the location, right? So that's basically I can work with prompt, uh, prompt formatting, basically prompt template. So that's the, that's the basics or, or the genesis of prompt engineering, right? Which is just a whole field, okay? Okay, once we have it now, I'm going to go ahead. Let's take the bis, let's take the bis, uh, let's take this a bit further and try to do something actually interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and import a couple of things. So I'm going to say from Lang chain, uh, lang chain dot prompt from lang chain dot dot prompt, okay dot prompt. I'm going to go ahead and import the following. So I'm going to import the following. The first I'm going to import is the prompt template. I'm going to import uh, also chat. This is going to be chat, chat, prompt template. I'm also going to import the human prompt template, and also going to import the system prompt template, just like that. Okay. Okay. Once I have all that done, I'm going to go ahead and simply run this all. Okay. So once I have run this all, now let's go ahead and actually create a bunch of values that you can use for this. So I'm going to create a head and say system underscore message message. So system message underscore a string is going to be something. So your AI is designed to tell funny jokes about something, right? So that's basically what it does. So it's just an AI designed to tell funny jokes about something, right? Okay, that's basically what we have. And then we're going to go ahead and simply use this uh, to create a system prompt. Okay, so uh, once we have this right here, uh, we're going to go ahead and simply uh, funny jokes. Let me just actually, let me just change this to be a, a prompt that I already written down, which it, it works really good. So I'll just use that prompt instead. Okay, so I'm going to make this a, a, a triple string, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and simply write in here. So let's say you are a helpful you're a helpful, okay, let me get it right. So you're a helpful AI. You're a helpful AI assistant. Okay, let me just break this onto multiple lines. I think it's just good if I just copy this and paste it instead of having to waste your time, right? So let me just go ahead and actually do that instead of having to type all this out because it's just the text anyway. It's nothing related with code. So let me just go ahead and simply uh, paste in this and I'll be back. Yeah, so I've just simply added in those uh, message right here. So, okay, system prompt you a helpful AI system given the following context, answer the question. Uh, if the answer cannot be uh, found in the context, simply say you do not know. So, we have already a bit of context. So, basically, this is now a, a way of grounding our LLM. So, basically, let's say that you want to have a document that you want to answer certain questions about, right? You can upload this document to uh, ChatGPT and then ask ChatGPT to answer questions using text from that specific document or that specific file, right? It's the same thing you're doing in here. So programmatically, this is how you do that. So it just basically provided the context, which is just basically anything. It could be content from a file, content from somewhere else, right? So basically saying, answer the question only if you can find the answer within the context. If you don't know the answer within, if the answer can't be found within the context, simply say you do not know to avoid something called hallucinations. So hallucinations are basically where the LLM doesn't know the answer, but you know, LLMs will always provide you an, an answer or will always have something to say, even though if you don't know the answer, right? So that's why I ask it. If you don't know the answer, simply say you don't know. Don't make up any answer. Don't hallucinate. That's what basically this does. Okay. So once we have that, this done, this prompt done, uh, let's go ahead and actually change this prompt into, uh, sorry, change this string into a system prompt. So I would say a template right here. 
and you're going to simply it's actually it's called is a prompt uh, prompt and you're going to simply go ahead and simply use the system prompt template and if you're going to say from prompt okay system prompt uh, let me just undo that so i'm just a system prompt and you're going to go ahead and create an instance of this you're going to go ahead and simply say the prompt it's going to be called this the the prompt template and you're going to go ahead and simply say prompt template right here and you're going to go ahead and simply say the input input needs input needs to be actually input underscore variables and the input variable you're going to expect only context so what are input variables input variables are the placeholder that you're using in here and we wrap the placeholders within curly braces so all the placeholders you're using are going to be the input variables so if you use multiple of them in here then you have to specify all those input variables within this list right here and you're going to go ahead and simply say template a template is going to be equals to the system prompt uh, system a message a string if you have right here that's going to be our template so once we have that you can run that cell and once that goes through basically now we are telling you are basically created a system prompt and you can use this system prompt on an llm so now you're going to go ahead and also create a bunch of things let's also create one for a human message doing this following the same process so i'm going to say the human underscore message message string you say what is the what is the answer to the question that doesn't really make sense so let's actually just change that and just because i'm using copilot so sometimes it's autocomplete so i say can you provide uh details on and if i pass in a given question that's basically so basically that's basically what the, what the human is asking so can you provide details on and then pass basically the human question now we're going to convert this uh this string into a prompt template so to do that you're going to say the human underscore message you're going to change this to a prompt uh prompt like this i'm going to say human and then i'm going to go in here and then specify all this right here so the prompt template is as before uh, the input variables in this case you have only question that's why you're using only question right here and the prompt is the human message itself this is a string right here okay so once we have that you can just run this and that's all we need to go ahead and create a human message prompt so once we have it, we're going to go ahead and create a list of messages and messages and it's going to be equals to a python list right here so you're going to go ahead and pass in the system message it's always the first one and you're also going to go ahead and pass in the human message prompt as well okay so once we have that done we are good to go so i'm going to go ahead and create a chatbot so i'm going to say chatbot underscore prompt uh prompt prompt uh prompt underscore template and you're going to go ahead and use this right here so human uh is kind of passing the prompt message right here you're going to pass in messages uh, actually this is messages and message is going to be equal to the message that we have right here and you're going to go pass in the input variables what input variables do we expect to be passed in so input variables are going to say the question which is from this one right here this this one right here and you're also going to pass with sorry i mean the context which is from this one right here and you're also going to pass in the question which is also from this specific prompt template so you need to pass in all those input variables as we specified above okay so once we have that done don't forget the comma right here okay so once you have that done we're going to go ahead and simply create that chatbot prompt template so once we have this chatbot prompt template created now you can go ahead and create a bunch of questions so you can go ahead and simply say a uh, question is going to be equals to and you're going to, uh, you're going to ask the question so what is the capital of france and then we're going to put in the context and context context france is a uh, france is a country in europe okay it's its capital i'm oh, sorry uh is capital is paris right so that's basically so this now this could be something that you read from a file right but now i'm just using a simple example to help you to understand so this could be something from a file something from another website something from somewhere else different right so basically this is a question that you want to ask it and now this is the context and the context can be information from anywhere so basically you are grounding the llm so that it doesn't hallucinate that's because you're saying hey don't just generate any answer generate answers specifically from this text and this text could be from an api from a document from a pdf file and if you have watched my other videos we have done this uh, getting information from pdf files from different file sources from text files and other stuff you can do all that i just want to explain to you the basics and how all this works so once i have it i'm going to run it and once i have run that i'm going to go ahead and simply ask the bunch of questions right here okay so now i'm going to go ahead and simply say uh chat prompt template i'm going to go ahead and format it i'm going to pass in a bunch of questions and also uh the context once i have that i'm going to go ahead and run that now that went successfully so once that's ready, i'm going to go ahead and simply invoke the llm again so llm dot invoke 
lm dot invoke and i'm going to go ahead and ask a bunch of uh ask a basically a question right here so i'm going to say chat from template uh dot format and i'm going to pass in the context and the question okay basically you can store this in a variable and use it right here if you want to because it's the same thing right so there's no point of doing this anyway so you can just get rid of it but i just want to show you what output you get in case you did that also you can see now if i bring that back if i bring this copy this and bring it back in here uh bring it paste it in here you can see what is being passed to the llm right you can see all the information that's being passed to the llm right so that's what i wanted you to see so once we have that i'm going to go ahead and simply uh store this in a variable called response or uh, response and then simply run that cell so once you're going to say response dot content and if you run that you can see the capital of france is paris and it answers the question using the the context which is this context right here provided so the answer to the question is in here in this context so let's I try to ask it another question so let's say question i'm going to do go ahead and pass in my own question and say what is the capital of uh kenya okay so the capital of kenya is where uh, is, is basically nairobi right so if i run that let's see if you're going to answer that question as well you can see i do not know the answer because the answer is not provided is not within this context so it goes ahead and say i do not know the answer to that question so that's basically well the basics of prompt engineering so that's basically what we also call a retrieval augmented generation kind of pipeline right so yeah so that's basically it on how to work with uh, different message types in langchain okay so once we have that out of the way now let's go ahead and look at langchain expression uh, langchain expression language so langchain expression language let's look at what really is langchain expression language so with langchain expression language commonly regarded as a LCEL, we can piece together chat models, prompts, and a collection of different objects to carry out really interesting stuff. So basically, you can think of long chain, like the chain, like a chain, right, has many ch things connected together. So with long chain expression language, we can chain different things together to do different stuff. And that's where the power of long chain really comes in. And even from the name long chain, chaining things together. And you chain those things together using long chain expression language. That's when you can think of it. Right, so once we have that now, let's take a look at lang chain expression language. So I'm going to go ahead and say lang lang chain expression language, just like that, and press enter. So lang chain expression language. So we've already know what we've already covered what lang chain expression language is. It just help us to piece different things together, such as chat models, prompts, templates, do different awesome stuff. And you'll see just in a moment, moment uh, how lang chain expression uh, expression language can help us avoid doing all this uh kind of a bit trick a long long process right because you have to do a lot of stuff to get all the way just to get all the way up here so with long chain expression language these things becomes really really easy to do so let's get into so let's say from long chain from long chain long chain dot co uh let me just see i'm going to get an output first i'm going to say long chain uh long chain underscore co uh dot output process i'm going to go ahead and import the str str so it is just a string output processor so basically takes uh, the response from the llm so you can see right now here we have to do if if, if i go ahead and simply print response so if i do uh, print response right here without the content attributes this is what we get back right you get a, uh, an air message but you can see the message the, what you really want back is this right is a content so so i had i have to go down here and simply do the content on it so with string formatting with output uh the, sorry, the string output processor it help us does it help us to achieve all that in the background so let's see how that works so now let's go ahead and actually create a chain and i'm going to use the the chat from template from template and then we're going to go ahead and simply pass pass in the also we're going to use the llm and then i'm going to pass in the string output processor so let me explain to you what this does so just by using this chain right here we have cut down on the whole place of doing all this right so it makes things really really easy so so with lang we're going to take the whatever we're going to pass in, which is basically two things right the question and the context so once we pass in the question and the context this will be processed first so all this will be done in the background this process of having to pass in having to do this right it will be done in the background okay once we pass in the question the context it will be done in the background and then after which the rest the lm will be invoked which is this stage right here right it will be the lm will be invoked for us and if I find uh, the output uh, parser is going to go ahead and format the output into a string object. So instead of having this out, you're going to get something like this out, which is much better. Okay, so that's basically what this chain does. So let's run the chain. Uh, let's run this piece of code. So once we run this piece of code, we're going to say chain dot invoke. 
invoke now we're going to go ahead and pass in a couple of things i'm going to pass in the question and the context because these are the inputs that this uh these are the inputs that this prompt template expects so i'm going to pass in the context and the question so if i run this uh let's see what we get back okay so it gets an argued context or so context let me see if i can get the spelling right so actually this needs to be a dictionary my bad okay so this needs to be a python dictionary so python dictionary and you're going to go ahead and pass in the context and the string right here so you can go ahead and simply say the context can be the context and let me just go ahead and simply say this is going to be the question itself right the question variable so if i run this let's see what we get back so the capital city of france is uh paris and if that's correct so you can go ahead and simply ask it another question and let's go ahead and say uh let's say uh what is the capital of kenya and you should tell us i don't know because we don't we didn't provide that in the context right so that's basically how it works so you can see how we can chain dif di different things together and all this this expression right here is called what you call the lang chain expression language using these pipe symbols right yeah so that's basically how the lang chain expression language works okay so let's take a look at this in depth so basically we had a prompt template and the prompt whenever we call we call the invoke it takes these inputs right this key uh key what uh, basically this dictionary which is a keyword argument and then basically formats the prompt templates so the formatted information is past the llm and the llm basically responds to that message and re returns back to us the response that response goes to the output uh stream as the str output processor which basically formats the output basically doing this process of calling the dot com component on the dot content on it and then basically return to us the output right so that's basically how langton expression language works so you can think of this as a chain right? it's a chain of processes chain of uh, different processes that work together to achieve our whole objective which is to answer a user question using a given context right so that's you can see the power of langton expression language making things so so much easier for us you can do it just in one line right okay now that you have looked at the language lang chain expression language let's look on what next on the list so let's now start working with lang chain agents so what are really agents so uh, an ai agent basically helps to convert text into action okay so you might be like okay that's a bit uh, bit strange what do you mean by that so take it in take for example right i want to find out what's the capital city okay let's let's lose another example I want to I want to build an AI system and if I, whenever I tell the AI system, hey, turn on the lights, the lights in my room go on, right? How can I do that? And that's where agents come into place. Agent can take your text, understand the text, and then use it to perform different actions, right? So take in some text, evaluate it, call some tools, and use the tools to do different things. So let's say uh, we're telling our agent, whenever you, you, the user is trying to turn off the light, right? Use this tool, which is basically an API, that, that, that turns on a device in my room which triggers the lights to come on right that's basically how you can think of it so you take a text reasons over the text evaluate what the user try, is understand what the user is trying to do and then goes ahead and use its available tools to carry out different actions okay so let's say we have a prompt template right here you pass in the prompt template to our llm asking hey turn on the lights in my room so it has a different tool so tool one tool two tool three so tool three is for checking the weather by using a weather api tool two is for turning on maybe the air conditioner in the room and tool uh, one is for turning on the light so my prompt to this lm is to turn on the light so it reasons over whatever i have typed uh, whatever I, I prompted it and then see which tool can i use to achieve whatever it understood from your prompt so it picks a tool executes it and then returns the response and then the lm executes so they say we turn off the light and and, and uh, once we turn off the light we let the lm we, we respond light turned on so that light and on goes to the lm and the lm response hey i have turned on the light in your room is there anything else you want okay something like that okay so now let's go ahead and try to implement a long chain uh, agent so okay so let's get long chain uh, agents just like that okay so once i have that in let's go ahead so one of the things I, I, I one thing I really think is really important for you to understand. I got this uh, from uh, online, uh, which is just from the official uh, language documentation. This is what it says: the core idea of agent is to use language models to choose a sequence of actions, uh, actions to take. So in a chain, a sequence of action is is uh, hard coded in code. In agents, 
A long chain model is used as a reasoning engine to determine which actions to take and in which specific order. Just like this diagram right here, right? We have a bunch of tools. It reasons over the user's input and decides which tools to use. So this is the reasoning engine. That's why I call it LLM brain, right? It reasons the brain. Okay. So that's basically what agents are. So let's try to work with agents in long chain. So the first thing we need to go ahead and do before we work with agents, we need to provide these agents these tools. So how do we create these tools? So there are custom tools that long chain comes with, but I'm going to show you how to build your own tools. Okay. So now let's go ahead and actually build a simple tool ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and import a, a bunch of things. So I'm going to say from, uh, actually, let me just copy this and bring it right in here. So once I have this import in, I'm going to go ahead and simply run that. That's all. Okay. Now we have built, uh, we have just imported all the phones. So we've imported from Langchain. We've imported the hub. Uh, from Langchain.agent, you're going to import the agent executor. From Langchain.tools, we're importing tool. From Langchain code.tools, we're importing tool uh, exception, which can handle exception with your tools. Uh, to prevent your uh, agentic workflows from crashing so we're going to also import from typing we're going to import literals and i'll just show you what you're going to use literal for and this is we're going to use literal for so we're going to create a tool that can calculate numbers okay do, do basic arithmetic operations such as uh, addition multiplication subtraction and division so basically you are just going to uh, create this uh operate operator types using these literals okay so once we have it let's go ahead and actually create the tools itself so we're going to use a decorator so i'm going to say tool this is the tool decorator which we imported. I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and create a function right here. Actually, called calculator. So uh, I'm just going to use a copilot right here to assist me with that. So I'm going to create a tool and you're going to give the tool a name. So I'm going to calculator and hyphen tool. Okay. And you're going to go ahead. You can also give this tool the return direct. So return direct enables the tool to be able to return to us output directly. Okay. So sometimes. Uh, this is a bit complicated, so let me not explain it for now. But basically, it returns to us output. That's basically what it does without having to run the tool through an agent. So we have this thing right here. So addition. So if, if the operator is addition, it's going to go add, add the numbers. If it's multiplication, multiply the numbers, subtraction, subtract, division, divide. And then else, we're going to go to the tool exception and raise this exception right here saying invalid operator. Okay. So but that's basically. So we're going to tell this calculator takes in an argument called operator. And this operator is of type this literal and you are going to take in two numbers a and b so a is a float and b is a float right so once we have it i'm going to go ahead and run it uh, let's see where i get an error so it says a uh, function must be a doc string okay must have a doc a doc string and that's very important and this always gets me off so you need to provide this tool a doc string so that's why we're providing a doc string to this tool is because the lm is reasoning over each individual tool how does it know what each tool does? And that's what the doc string provides. So it provides a description of what the tool does. So that's why you need to inc incorporate doc strings basically because it gives the LLM a description of each individual tool. So let's go ahead and actually do that right here. So we're going to go ahead and simply say a uh, simple calculator tool that is used for addition, multiplication, subtraction, or division, uh, or, di or divide two numbers. That's basically it. So now let's run this. Now it should work because now the LLM has a description of what the tool is. Okay. So whenever it's reason, it's going to reason using that uh, text that you provided right here. Okay. So make sure this is very descriptive and you tell Ed LLM exactly what your tool is going to be used for, right? Because it's going to use this to reason and choose which appropriate tool to use. So if you get this wrong right here, the LLM is also going to get it wrong in choosing the right tool. Okay. So once that's done, let's go ahead and actually do the form. So I'm going to go ahead and simply say uh, print. And I'm going to do a calculator dot add. So I'm going to go ahead and simply add a couple of numbers. So if I run this, uh okay let me just actually i i don't i can't we can't run the tool like that so sorry so let us say let's get some names of the properties of this tool so i can get the name property i can also get the the doc string property which is just a description of the tool and i can also get the arguments that this tool needs to that the arguments uh yeah you can also get this and you can also get the arguments when it is want to do so args just like that so this is done to us the name of the tool the description of the tool which is basically the doc string this return to us uh this value right here this true or false value boolean value and it also return to us the argument in this case you're having the operator the which is of type uh this literal op, uh, list and you also have the uh a and b which are also float values right so if i run that now you should get the name as calculator which is this name that we gave it right here as the first argument to the tool decorator we have the the, the argument that it takes which are these arguments right here right you can see all of it right here so all this is going to be passed to lm and lm can reason over all this uh, stuff and then 
be from there be able to choose the right tool so now let's try to run the tool and let's see so calculator let me just uh, do this i'm going to say calculator dot run just like that so calculator dot run and need to pass in a python dictionary right here so we need to pass in uh, an operator so operator sorry my bad so we need to pass in an operator and then we're going to pass in also a so an operator needs to be uh, either addition multiplication division depending on what value that you specified in here right so if we say in this case you want to perform addition of a which is a, one of the arguments so if you look here this one of the arguments a and you're going to use a uh, as two and b as a uh, three so if you add these two numbers you're going to get five so that's basically how our tool works right so that's basically how the tool works and that's basically how the lm so if you ask a question the lm uh, basically an lm agent hey add for me find for me the sum of two and uh, three so the lm reasons over the tools and see okay i have a calculator tool and this tool can be used to perform addition operations okay fine so what arguments do i need to pass in what uh, what kind of arguments do i need to pass in so it looks at this argument so it, okay sees i need to pass in an operator and my operator needs to be one of these addition multiplication division blah blah so in this case i want to add a number so i need to, I need to specify add as a argue as the operator argument and uh, the users the user also said that you wanted to find the uh, the sum of two and three so a and b needs to be two and three so provide those arguments into our tool and then use those arguments to call our tool and then our tool gets ran like this and then gets uh, the answer gets generated and returned back to the llm just like this so the answer gets executed returns back to the llm and the llm can use to answer the question so in this case our prompt is what's the product of five and seven so the lm goes okay i have a calculator tool i can use it for addition operation which operator do i need to provide that's the product that's the multiplication uh which uh which arguments for a and b so that's uh, five and seven so five and five five times seven it's going to use all those arguments to call the tool five times seven is 35 so the, the tool gets executed and the answer gets returned to the lm so the answer gets returned to lm as 35. so the lm goes hey the product of five and seven is 35 okay and that's the final response that you get back that's basically how these agents work okay so now once we have that done uh, we can go ahead and uh, basically build a simple agents that can use these different tools so we have learned how to build a custom tool but there are other tools out there that you can use on your own so LangChain provides a bunch of tools that you can use okay maybe you can cover that in other videos but in, uh, yeah in the future videos we we'll use those other tools in fact so this is just the, the foundations okay so just focus on understanding the foundations, but the other tools that you can use, some other tools help you call uh, weather APIs to get weather information. Because if you ask an LLM, what's the current weather in Nairobi? The LLM has not, doesn't have current information, right? So if you understand how large language models work, they're trained on past data. They don't have current information. Information. So if I ask it, what's the current weather in Nairobi? It doesn't know. So it's going to hallucinate and generate for me some kind of fake answers right or basically give me a very generic answer say hey Nairobi sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold yara yara blah 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 and stuff like that right but uh, if you have a tool that can call an actual API weather API to get the current weather in Nairobi then the LM can answer the question more accurately so I can go ahead and say okay basing on the information information coming from my weather tool the current weather in Nairobi is a bit chill maybe around uh, 20 degrees celsius okay so that may not be chill for everyone so that might be hot for some of you but anyway you get the whole point right so that's that's basically how it works so how do we build these tools these agents that can use these tools so let's go ahead and actually build one of these agents and this is where we build agents so let's build an agent that can use one of these tools one of these tools so let's go ahead and do, do it that right here so say building uh, a a tool okay so building a tool calling agent basically an agent that can call this this uh, specific tools so i'm going to go ahead and specify a bunch of tools in here so in this case i have only one tool, which is calculator tool so i'm going to go ahead and uh, create a list of tools in this case i have only one tool but in other cases you might have multiple tools right in this case i have only one tool okay just for demo so once i have the tool i'm going to go ahead and import some prompt uh, prompt is going to be equals to i'm going to import it from hub.pull and you're going to go ahead and pull this prompt so it's going to be uh just h w chase okay and then uh 17 hopefully i don't get this name right wrong so open open ai 
let me just modify this so open ai this is going to be tools and this is going to be agents just like that so that's basically so h uh, harrison chase i think yeah harrison chase is i think the creator of uh, long chain i don't know but yeah this name sounds familiar so uh hw chase 17 first slash open ai hyphen tools hyphen agent okay so this is agent and not agents okay so once i have this uh so you need to go to the long chain hub and then input for me this prompt which is just a prompt that is used for lm and let me just print for you this prompt so you can actually see what's the content of this form so pretty uh pretty print so it's going to say pretty underscore print and then let's run that so it's going to return to you uh pull the the prompt and then return to the the basically how this prompt is so this is a system prompt your helpful AI assistant then the chat history goes in here okay so the the, the 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 agent is aware of your previous conversations and then the human message goes in here, which is basically the input itself and then the, the message placeholder is this agent scratch part which the agent use for different working with different stuff okay so once we have that done, we can go ahead and just do the following right here. So we're going to go ahead and simply say uh, agent is going to be equals to create uh, create underscore agent basically uh, create tool underscore tool calling agent. You're going to go ahead and pass in the bunch of tools that we have. So we're going to say LLM, which is a, the a language language model. We're going to go ahead and pass in the tools. And also going to pass in the prompt okay so we see uh, we have an error right here uh, of importing this so we had this imported previously uh no we, ha we haven't actually imported so we need to import it right here so we need to go ahead and say create uh create tool uh tool okay i think it's uh should be let's let's let's, let's try to use this and see if this would work so let's copy this and let's run this because I was having another method in in my mind, so let's see if it works. So let me just change this and then change it to be that. And let's run this. Okay, that goes through. So once we have that done, you're going to go ahead and uh, use the agent executor. So we're going, to, we're going to go ahead and simply say agent underscore uh, executor. It's going to be agent executor. We're going to pass in the agent we want to execute. So that's going to be agent. It's going to be equals to agent. We're going to pass in, sorry, you're going to, post, going to pass in my bad. You're also going to go ahead and pass in the tool to this agent and the tools. Uh, I think it's tools. Yeah, I mean, it's tools and you're going to use the tools, pass in the tools. You're also going to go ahead and uh, pass in verbose. So verbose, basically, you see the reasoning, uh, what the agent is doing in the background. So once you have that, you're going to go ahead and run this all. So return true direct uh, uh, not allowed in multi-agent. Okay, so now for, for this, I have to go back and turn off this right there. So I'm going to go ahead and simply say false, turn it back to false. Just like that and then let's create this run this again so once i come down here i'm going to go ahead and execute this uh return tr return true and not allowed in okay so i have to execute uh this uh let me just find it where i had it uh let's say tools we had it okay this one right here so tool let me just execute everything down here all the way here okay so once you have that done uh this way i have to execute again because uh, we changed the tools we change it up here but so we need to also run this so this is also updated in memory okay well so once we have that done uh, that done you can you can actually go ahead and actually call this agent so we need to go ahead and say response is going to be equals to you're going to use the agent executor dot invoke and you're going to pass in a bunch of things so when passing uh basically all you need to pass in this in this time is just basically input so input and you're going to say basically here ask it um ask the message just say what is a product product of two and three so in this case you're expecting to use a calculator tool so let's see what it does so you can see it's entering the agent chain and you can see it's invoking the calculator tool with operators of operator as multiply a as two and then b as as three so the the agent the the tool report responds with six and then the lm responds back to us so it says the product of two and three is six right so basically we ask the agent a question what's the product of two and three so the agent reasons okay in this case it has only one tool so it says okay i need to find the product of two and three so it uses the tool description to see okay which tool can i use so it uses all this information from the tool description uh all this information to 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 basically help it in its reasoning process or its uh analysis process to arrive at the tool to use so in this case you find that okay with this tool i can do multiplication and for product it, product means multiplication so 
I can need to use this tool. Okay, what arguments do I need to pass to this tool? So I need to pass in the operator argument. In this case, you say that the operator argument can be multiply, add, right? Goes ahead and follow, finds out which argument fits. In this case, it finds that multiplication fits. So you pass in as the operator as multiplication. You also need to pass in A and B. And A and B are two and three. So it passes all those, finds all that information, calls the tools with these arguments using the run. And then finally, the tool responds with a six. So question, reason over tools. Pick a tool, pass in the argument that it found, and then execute it. And then the answer which it, the, the, the tool generated was six. So six get passed back to the LM itself. So six gets passed back and the LM generates an answer. The product of two and three is six. So goes ahead and respond to the user basing on the output of the tool that was executed. So from template, reasons of our tools, pick one tool, pass in the argument that the tool needs, executes, get the response back, use the response to answer the user's question, which is the final response. In this case, the final response is the product of two and three is six. Okay, so I hope that gives you now a basic understanding of how agents and tool calling in agents work. Okay, so we have understood the whole process, right? Passing a prompt template, goes in here, reasons over tools, find which arguments to pass these tools, call the tools, execute the tool, get the response back, use the response to synthesize and there is a final response to the user. Yeah, so that's basically how a tool works, okay? So you have covered all these uh, tools, calling tools, uh, long chain agents and all that, right? So all this is just not the talk. You're actually going to use all this knowledge in the upcoming videos to build our final rag, uh, graph rag application. So practice, 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 because practice makes perfect, right? There's no shortcut. You just have to practice. Yeah, guys, so that's all for this. In the next video, you're going to look at building uh, basically a tool that can, basically an agent that can convert natural language into cipher code. And this cipher code will be executed on our knowledge graph to be able to retrieve information back. And all this will be done by an AI agent. That's what we'll be covering in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you like this video, it's one of the easiest ways you can support the channel is just by liking the video. Dropping me a comment, let me know how you guys find this video. Either good, bad, they're all helpful to improve the content. You can also find me on Medium where I actually write articles on these videos. So if you look, if you go to Medium page, you can see I have articles about all this stuff. So you can find all of them on my Medium page at uh, Prince Crumper. On YouTube, we're probably watching this video. Hopefully, you uh, it's called with Prince, right? And then on Twitter, you can also follow me on Twitter uh, or X at Prince underscore Crumper. And if you want to uh, get uh, get to me much, much quicker, you can follow me on LinkedIn or X, preferably LinkedIn. I will get back to you much, much faster in case you have any idea, any projects you, you want to do. Uh, basically anything, right? Any suggestions for future content, anything that you want me to make videos on, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn at Prince Crumper. So guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, share with your friends and family who you think might find this important or helpful. And also, let me comment, let me know how you, how you feel of the video. Okay, And if you haven't subscribed yet, please kindly consider subscribing because that can help the channel grow. And if you want to donate further, you can also buy me coffee. The link to that is in the description of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Keep safe.